a little over two years. So, I mean, it's been yeah. really, it's been ups and downs. It's been mentally tough. It's been a lot of challenges. It's been a lot of inner digging, like really deep inside to, to get that um, perseverance to, to struggle through it and push through it and figure out what I really, really, really want to do. And I think I've kind of done it enough over the last two years that I can sit down and actually yeah. have that, the job thing of like, is it something I really want to do? Is it something that really pulls my heartstrings? Is it something that I really am passionate about? And if it's not, then I don't want to compromise myself just because it's a paycheck or just because it's money or, you know, whatever the reason is. So for me personally, yeah. and I know that everybody doesn't think that way, but. So it it is hard to find, man, what you, what you really want to do. Cause we've been so used to, so accustomed over the last you know, 20 plus years to, to doing a little bit of everything, right? Like I, how many people I've talked to and they're like, yeah, I want to do project management. Well, I mean, are you really a project manager or do you manage these little things? You know, once you step into that world in the civilian world, it's like a whole new thing. I mean, I'm, I'm exposed to project managers on a daily basis. And it's like, man, I've all along, I thought I was a project manager in, in the Marine Corps, but you know, <laughs> this is completely different. You know, I'm exposed to this whole new, this whole new world of project management, <clears throat> things I, I didn't really realize. Right. But you know, you have to go to school for stuff like that. It's, it is tough, man, to, to figure out. I will say that every Marine can definitely get a job as a janitor though, because we are so used to cleaning <laughs> up our rooms and, and fielding. We have no issues doing that. <laughs> yeah, man. But I had the same issue getting out and I'm like, man, what, what the heck am I going to do now? You know, um, Hmm. To the to the point where I, as I was transitioning out, as I was like maybe a year from transitioning out, I started contacting uh, different sections, like the like the logistics section, like at the warehouses, talking to the master sergeant there, and I'm like, hey, uh, look, I'm about to retire. Want to see if I can work with you? I'm getting my forklift certification because maybe I'll be a forklift operator at Walmart or something. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do yet. And he's like, yeah, sir, come on through, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll have you put in some hours, maybe during your lunchtime or something. And uh, all you need is like 20 hours of, you know, driving time. Then you're, you know, you can take the test to be certified. Nothing that hard, but it got to that point where I was like going outside of what I know just to make sure I have all bases covered. I went to the OSHA classes. I got my OSHA certification, the forklift stuff, black lean, lean six Sigma black belt. It's hard to know what the heck you want to do because we're exposed to so much. And as soon as you retire or as soon as you get out, it's like the whole world is open for you. And unless you have a specification in something, maybe like airframes mechanic or something, then maybe you want to continue pursuing that. And it's a good paying job, you know, unless you have some kind of specification like that, then it's kind of tough. It really is. I'm, I'm still on that boat. I'm like I'm working this good job that I love, but I feel like I, I want something else and it's hard to find that. So I sympathize with that. Yeah. And like I said, not, not everybody's has the same mindset as me. I, I think it's because I spend, I like to attribute it to that. And I'm, I really honestly feel like that's re the reason why as I sit down, I know you do journaling as well and I don't know how much it's helped you over the years, but for me personally, like just sitting down, collecting my thoughts, gathering my thoughts, putting stuff on paper every morning. Like you don't think about it too much. It's like, oh yeah, it's a journaling thing. Maybe it's a buzzword of the year of like 2024 is the year to journal. It's really like you just, you take the stuff that's bothering you. You take the stuff that's on your mind. You take the stuff that you're really agonizing or contemplating and you put it down on paper and something happens between the, the point of you thinking about it, maybe overnight, not being able to sleep, and then you wake up the next morning and you actually write that stuff down. And there's some kind of physical connection thing. I can't explain it. I don't know why it works that way for me, at least, right. and many others that I've talked to. But it's like you're taking those thoughts out of your head, putting them physically down on paper, and you don't have to do anything with it. Like you just put the thing away and then open it up tomorrow and then write some more stuff. But for me, it's, it's this therapeutic kind of thing where it takes all of that burden out of my brain, at least in the moment. So I don't have to sit and stress about it and go through my day, like constantly thinking about it. I just write the stuff down and then I put it away and it really frees up a lot of space in my mind to be able to think about other things. And I took the exact opposite. Like I've been a certification. F I can probably beep that out, but uh, for, 
for quite a long time, right? I've, I've really yeah. been on the certification bandwagon for quite a long, for most of my career. Like I've taken the old Microsoft certifications and I've taken all this, you know, like Cisco and all these other different things. That's right. Yeah. And when I got to retirement time and I got to that point to get out, like literally the last two years, I haven't done anything with cert. I haven't gone out and been like, oh, I need to get certified in this. What I have been doing though, in the contrary, is really just finding the things that I feel like are going to help me out. Like for this podcast, for example, it's learning how to use a camera, learning how to set up lighting, learning how to do uh, audio and video editing, learning how to put the stuff on the internet, how to cut it up and do all this stuff. And I've really just been doing my own kind of personal certification, understanding how to do right. those things so that I can do them better, you know, a little bit better each time that I do it rather than going to some paying somebody like $500 and sitting through their 40 hour course of how do I edit videos for YouTube? Like there's plenty of them out there in every direction you look, especially when you're actually searching for that stuff, it pops up on your feed, it pops up on your search and it pops right. up in your YouTube. I haven't. So that's good. You, you've taken been, uh, you've been doing it. your own research then on all that. Yeah. So that's I, good. I that feel like, it, no, I was going to say, I was going to say, I feel like out of all the certification stuff that I've done in the past, where do I actually apply it? How do I actually apply it in my job, in my life? And a lot of times it's like, it's just going through the motions, right? To get the certification. Whereas if you're actually actively taking a piece of information that you find on the internet or whatever you read, and you actually start to apply it today and then apply it tomorrow and then apply it the next day over, you know, a week, two weeks, a month, a year, that actually builds up and you're actually building skills and muscle memory and things that actually you're actually going to use versus taking a certification and not doing anything with it. Like I can see if you're taking, you had mentioned you want to take the PMP, right? My friend just That's finished right. his PMP last year and he basically from the moment he got his PMP certification, he then went on Upwork or wherever and he started putting it out there and he pulled one or two contracts and now he's on a bigger contract now, but he's still on active duty. He's still got two years left on active duty. He's actively doing PMP for businesses and doing this consulting stuff and this project management stuff for businesses and getting paid for it with the certification that he took. And I don't think it really took the certification awesome. for him, but maybe that was kind of like the the mental like way of him reinforcing the skills of being able to do project management. Cause you and I both know we've both done it in, in the military as well. We've both done project management, so we know how to do it, but really sure. just having that reinforcement there maybe. So yeah, the, the certificate makes you <clears throat> technically like a project manager, same way, mm -hmm. like a college degree makes you technically, uh, you know, whatever a bachelor's in science and whatever management, uh, or as we say in the Marine Corps, you are now certified smart, right? So, right. <laughs> uh, but that just gives you the title of it, right? What goes on behind the scenes and you perfecting that craft is what is, is the, the crux of it. Like that, that's the chunk of it that, that needs to happen on behind the scenes. I can say all day that I'm, you know, I have a bachelor's in, in business management or I'm working towards a master's and whatever. Do I have that experience though? Yeah, you have the title, but do you have that experience? I think your, your friend that you mentioned is doing it the right way. You know, he's got his PMP, he's actually getting boots on the ground, you know, experience with this stuff. And then once he actually retires, he can put that on his resume. Hey, I've been, not only do I have the certification, I have actually, I have actually been exposed to helping businesses or doing this project management for businesses for the last two years. So I'm not just some college graduate coming to you with a piece of paper. You know, I actually have that experience, that hands-on experience, you know, and, and John, I, I'm glad you brought up journaling too, because I can talk about that stuff all day and I have way too yeah. many journals, <laughs> way too many. <laughs> you can look behind me. I got a stack of these green law books back there that I've, I've, uh, I've kept on my, my career, my military career. Come yeah, there right you here. Go. <laughs> Wait, there you go. I, I also have uh, uh, one right behind me as well. <laughs> That's another yeah. one here. Um, no, but I, I keep a ton of these around, right? I have one for, um, you know, my job offer, they, they provide me with these notebooks, right? These are like basically green logbooks because I work for the Navy, right? And um, I fill those things up at work with taskers, you know, same as I did over my career. But I also carry around a small green uh, flexible cover notebook, and I call it the notes and quotes 
book, right? I keep it all of me. It's, it's tiny. It's like a three by five. You know, lately I've been taking it to my new house to take measurements and stuff. And I just put everything in there. I hear something that somebody says, a quote or something like that. I throw that in there, you know, just things I want to remember. I also keep, um, what is it? That overnight journal, like the, uh, I'll wake up in the, in the morning or in the evening and just put on, you know, long form type of journals. Like, Hey, what happened today? What do I expect to happen tomorrow? You know, future plans, things like that. I have one of those in a nice leather cover, right? So I have a different journal for different reasons. Uh, one sitting actually next to my bed because I do wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, it's one of these, right? But I kind of wake up in the middle of the night and I think of something, oh, you know, something for the YouTube channel, something for the podcast, something for whatever, something I need to ask my wife the next morning. And I just don't want to forget about it. Cause I'm constantly up. I can't really sleep that well. So I'm constantly up writing this stuff down journals for everything. I'm trying to even get my kids on it because I'm like, that only can help you expand your mind. You know, it's helped me immensely. I'm all over the place at all times. And I've always been like that until I started using those green log books and still I started until I started using my, my journals and that's kind of kept me on track. And when I don't have something at hand, you know, I use the, the notes app on my phone. There's a certain feeling that you get putting pen or pencil on paper. You know, it's not the same as, you know, typing something up. It's this, I don't know what it is. Just going from digital to analog, just, uh, it feels good. It feels really good to me. Yeah. That's why I said, I can't really put a, a name on it or put a finger on what exactly it is, but it's some kind of visceral, like 10,000 year old human instinctive yep. like thing. Like that's. I mean, that's how we passed information for thousands of years before we had computers. You know, we, it was first, it was spoken, you know, word and chanting. And then eventually we figured out ways to record things and keep them for longer periods of time than just a one-on-one -on -one conversation or you talking to a group of people. Like we figured out how to record our histories. We figured out how to record you know, document our family stories, document the deaths and births of our family members, document how to harvest corn, you know, different things that we've done over the, over the centuries. And it started right. with something simple like that. And I think it's just that kind of animalistic thing that's deep down in the brain somewhere. That's what I attribute it to. But yeah, it's very visceral. It's the same kind of visceral feeling that you get when you write down, like, some people do this at the beginning of the year, like on the 1st of January, they'll write down like the things that they are trying to get rid of in their life or whatever on a little list on a piece of paper. And then they burn that piece of paper and it's just kind of this kind of visceral ephemeral thing that they do. And it mm -hmm. kind of reinforces in your mind, at least that it's a, it's a major event. Like it's a, a serious, something you're taking serious, right. Versus something you're just kind of thinking about or spitballing or whatever it happens to be. I've not done the, uh, the envelope burning thing. Cause I'd write it down. I'd burn it. And then I'd forget about what I wrote. So <laughs> that's just me. I'd have to write There's it down that. in two places. I'm like, all right, well, I need to cross this out and burn it. <laughs> but I also need to remember what the hell I just burned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or no, you, but, uh, the things that you want to forget, you write those down and burn them. Then you can forget them. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That I have no idea. I mean, I that happens to me on a daily basis, man. I I can't remember what I just had for breakfast, so I got no issues with that, you know. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm 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 trying to. So that's something I I had always uh, stressed out to to my Marines during my time in uniform. Say, hey, look, you have this simple little you know government issue little green log logbook. Use it, use it, because I I saw a, a turn in how I was completing tasks. When I started using my stuff and this was just like a tasker logbook that I was keeping, right? I was mm -hmm. logging in what I need to do, checking it off notes. Sometimes I put like, you know, events or ideas and things like that. It kind of grew to other things from there. I can tell you, I was having a hard time remembering things until I started writing them down. And, uh, even to this day, I cannot remember, you know, too much, you know, like my short-term memory sucks maybe because I don't properly exercise it or whatever. I can remember things I didn't like in, uh, in sophomore year of high school, but for some reason, my short-term memory is terrible. But I think that these logbooks, these notebooks, these journals kind of keep me in tra on track with everything I need. And I'm even trying to pass that down to my kids. You know, they're, they have yet to, to write stuff in their journals that I give them for Christmas. There's like a picture drawn on mm -hmm. the first page and then that's, that's it. But I'm trying to show them like, Hey, look, this, this actually helps, man, you know, put your, only you are going to read this. I'm never going to open up their journals, right? 
put your ideas, put your thoughts, put your feelings, put everything in there and, and look back on it later, you know, see how you've grown, reflect on that stuff. And even coming from like a military background, you or I, or any, anybody else out there, you know, it's good to be, you know, have that warrior mindset and feel like you are, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, untouchable, you know, like you're, you're, you're an elite warrior, whatever it is, wherever you're coming from. It's always good to write down your thoughts and feelings. I think no matter, I mean, we're, we're not, I'm not too much man to be able to write that stuff down is what I'm trying to say. You know, I don't need to tell anybody about it. You know, it's just between me and my, my pages or whoever opens up my, my journal at one point in time in the near future. But, uh, it's always good to write stuff down like that. You know, it's, uh, stuff that I don't, I don't tell anybody and it's in there and it's almost like a release. Like I'm no longer carrying that on myself. I can actually put it down on paper, file that thing away. Nobody's really going to look at it, you know, and it just feels good. I don't know if other people had that feeling. It feels good to take stuff off my mind that's been bugging me, put it on there, and then maybe reflect on it or, you know, jot things down, how I'm going to improve that, how I'm going to fix it, how I'm going to overcome it. And it's just a good feeling. It, it really is. And I think that's the feeling that you get from actual putting things on paper and, and, and journaling. I think that's part of the reason why I constantly do it almost every single day. I've been doing it for, I don't know. 15 years almost. Yeah. I was going to ask you how you started and when you started journaling and like what, what kind of sparked that? It was probably after my first enlistment. No, maybe during my first enlistment, I started jotting stuff down. Right. And I always started with these little, I had never journaled before I, I came in the military. It all started with that, you know, these military log books that I have. I was just told, Hey, you know, put your tasks in there so you don't forget them. All right, good to go. So started writing my tasks down you know, and then started writing other things in there. Like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in a brief at the base theater and I'm like, oh, you know, just maybe draw a picture or, you know, cause you get bored, you know, you got your, you know, coming back from summer and they, you get all like a block of classes. They call it the 101 days of summer um, hmm. or back in the saddle training. You know, I'd sit there and I just jot down ideas, jot down funny things that I heard, you know, whatever the person up there was standing on the, on the, on the uh, podium was saying something that kind of stood out to me. I figured, you know, I, maybe I want something nicer and s to set it apart from my military log books. So I went to like a bookstore and I found, you know, one of these leather bound uh, journals. It was like fake leather. It was, it looked nice to me at the time. I, I, I was like in my mid twenties. I was like, Hey, this just looks like cool. Something cool. Um, then I started jotting stuff down. I can recall when I went to TBS, the basic school, it's like, um, several months long, um, in Virginia, in Northern Virginia for like officer, off, excuse me, officer training. And then I bought a leather notebook and I filled it up with every single day thoughts of how things are going at the basic school, you know, like today, what today sucked, you know, it was like a 20 mile hike or it's, we got snowed in or, you know, my roommates, this and that, you know, are cool, this and that. And it kind of grew from there. And that was like 14 years in the Marine Corps. So, and I've been just doing it steadily since probably I got real serious into it probably at my maybe eight year mark in the Marine Corps, you know, when I started like actually putting thoughts and, mm -hmm and ideas and feelings and things like that into my journals. Yeah. I still have them all in my, my closet. You know, they're all kind of locked up. Nobody needs to go through them. You know, nobody's going to go through them. <laughs> you know, I told my, my family if after I pass away, if they want to go through them, that's fine. But for right now, I just leave my stuff there. You know, I'm not going to go through your stuff. Please don't go through mine. It's kind of personal, but, uh, and yeah. some people don't like to, to do that. And some people don't like to put it on, on paper because it could be found. Right. And uh, actually, one thing that I, I will bring up is, I don't know if you saw it with the latest update on the iPhone, they now have a journal app on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. That's something that popped up on mine. I had no idea. I was like, oh, well, I'm waiting for them to bring it onto like the Mac, the MacBook and the iPad. It kind of doesn't make any sense to me why you would have a journal app on. I, I hate typing on this thing as it is, right? So <laughs> it'd be a lot better if they had it on the MacBook or the uh, the iPad because I'm always on those things. I don't know if people feel comfortable putting their deep, dark thoughts in an Apple journal or if they'd rather just put it on paper or what. Yeah, it's, it all started for me like eight years or uh, at my eight-year mark, like when I started doing 
doing it heavily and I've been doing it ever since. I have my go-to brands. I have them all kind of filed away. I just bought a, uh, a leather cover for it so I can carry my pens in there and all that. I used to carry them around anywhere I went. I figured I, I looked weird going to like a baseball game with a journal. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I'm, I'll just carry my little three by five, my back pocket. And uh, if I need to transfer anything, I will. Yeah, I found myself in some weird places with my journal a couple of times and people asking me and like looking at what I'm doing. And I, I really don't care. Like they can ask questions and I write so small anyway. It's like super, super tiny. So yeah. it's not like I'm worried about somebody looking over my shoulder. Actually, I don't really care about that either. But is there a time where you've had like a break in journaling or if, if you've ever not been consistent with it. And I mean, I ask it because there's days where like today, for example, I should have journaled today, but I was, I got caught up doing some other stuff around the house and then just didn't happen. And maybe I'll hit it before I go to sleep or whatever, but there's days or weeks sometimes where I don't journal, where I'm just too busy and I've got a bunch of stuff going on and I just don't think about it. That's why I ask like, is there a time where you, have a break in your journal for like a day or two or a week or two, and then you just go back into it. And so sometimes like when I have a slow day, when, you know, I've just been at work, not, nothing, nothing out of the norm really has happened. It, it's almost like I have to force myself sometimes. Right. Um, it's, it felt like that, like at the beginning stages. Now it's almost like, you know, nothing really to report today. Kids are good. You know, just interaction with kids, interaction with people, something that might've happened something funny that happened at work, you know, but I have found that, uh, sometimes I might skip a day, you know, sometimes I even tried it to where I would skip an entire week and just do like my journaling at the end of the week, just kind of encompassing mm -hmm. the entire, you know, weekly events. But then I found like, I can't really remember what happened on Tuesday <laughs> or Monday too well, right. uh, unless I look at like my little notes and quotes books. Right. But yeah, there's, there's times where I skip days. I mean, there's, there's nothing really wrong with that. You know, it doesn't have to be every day. Actually it, it's sometimes it's tough to do it every day because sometimes you don't have really a lot to report. Right. So it, it might feel like you're being forced to do it or you're forcing yourself to do it. <laughs> it's a good practice to do it every day. I feel like I'm always, if it's not journaling that I'm writing something down every day, but uh, especially my notes in, in quotes book, that little three by five, that thing, I'm on my, my third one. I, I write in that thing every single day. It might not be a long form journal. There's definitely something that goes into that every single day. But as far as my long form journal, yeah, sometimes I might skip two or three days. If there's nothing really to report, just encompass everything on a Friday as much as I can remember. Um, I don't see that there's anything wrong with it. You know, it's just, uh, I'm still getting my practice in on writing. Sometimes it feels forced. Sometimes I don't want to do it, but I have to be, I have to have like the ambiance set up, right? I have to have, there's either like on my, on my sofa, I have this L shaped sofa with, with this little, uh, excuse me, this little uh, lamp on the side. It's kind of like low lighting. I like writing in there, uh, during like the evening hours when everything's quiet, kids are settling down and going to bed. And that feels like a good time to do it. Um, or I have like my art table. It's kind of like a drafting desk. I have a, um, a light that goes over it, over the entire desk. I dim the light down low and I just kind of put on some, you know, lo-fi music and I'm just kind of going at it, you know, just writing about my day or my week. Yeah. I just have to have that, that setting for me to be constructive in what I'm writing. If not, if there's noise around, I'm not going to be writing anything. I'm not going to feel like I, I want to write anything. It just has to have the right setting for me. If not, I'm just distracted and I can't do anything. It's just the way my mind works, I suppose. What about what about you? You have to have, you write every day or every week or how's it work for you? Yeah, I try to write every single day. I've been writing journals for at least ten years, if not longer. And mm -hmm. actually started back in high school writing journals and then I stopped for quite a long time and then I got back into it. And I know when I first got back into it again. 10 or 12 years ago or whenever it was it felt on some days like it was forced like you mentioned as as i've gone through the process because the last time i had a break was probably at least six months like in the last in the last year it was about six or eight month break where i didn't write anything down in a journal per se i was still writing stuff down but i was writing stuff in in, in a notes app or an evernote or something like that 
Um, yeah. So I was still keeping notes of stuff, but I wasn't actually writing in my journal. I got to the point where I was like, you know what? If all you do is just open up the book and write down today's date, like that's all you have to do. Like that's literally all you have to do. If you want to write something else, if you want to write what's on your mind, if something pops into your mind, if you want to say, you know, this day sucks already and, and you know, it's 8 a.m. and this day sucks, like write that down and then close it. Like you don't have to write anything every single day. Um, and yeah. I think that's what's made it the easiest for me is being able to give myself that lack of, you know, that very, very limited space to say, okay, if you want to write just the date and then close the journal, fine, do that. And then put it away and then open it up tomorrow and maybe tomorrow will be different. Yeah, I give myself a lot of a lot of leeway when it comes to that because I know if I don't, it definitely feels forced. It feels like I have to sit down and come up with something interesting to write down. And some days I just don't have something interesting to write down. Like I do a lot of writing either way, whether it's writing quotes or writing, you know, notes or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily all go into the journal. And maybe that's the distinction that I'm missing is the difference between a journal and just a notebook and, you know, why are they not the same? There, there's a point maybe a few months ago where I was trying to actually, or may, no, it was maybe last year. I was trying to get everything set up properly, right? I wanted a proper journal. I wanted a proper, you know, everything notebook, you know, like the notes and quotes is what I call it. Notebook, a proper like work log book, right? It's, it's really three, three notebooks that I, that I go back and forth with really four. Cause I carry around in my daily pack, right? I have like this everyday carry. So I have my, I take a backpack to work, right? For whatever reason, I always take a sketchbook with me. I, I love art and I love drawing. I, I love sketching stuff. So I always have like a, you know, small, I guess journal size sketchbook with me, throw that in the pack. Um, I buy these little tabs that, they're like sticker tabs. They're pen holders, really. I buy it. There's like a pack of five for I don't know how much from, you know, online. I just stick it on the back so I can hold a pencil holder pen on all my journals. If they don't already come with one, right? Like this one didn't come with one. So I'd probably stick a little tab on the back and it would just hold the pencil. Um, so I carry a, an, uh, a sketchbook. I carry that uh, three by five notes and quotes book. I keep the journal here at the house. I don't, I have no need to take that with me to work. Let me see. And I was, I, for some reason, I, I tend to take several different like pens and, and pencils and stuff with me. There's a ruler that I take with me. You know, I have this little leather case that I, uh, that I bought offline. It's really like a pencil case, right? But I just kind of keep it all in there just in case work gave me this little pilot pen, basically a pen, a blue pen, a re, um, blue pen, black pen, and a pencil all in one. So I kind of take all that stuff to work, you know, on top of that, like my lunch and all that good stuff. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I Sometimes it feels like too much. Like I'm never going to draw. I'm never going to draw like at work, you know, but I find myself going outside for lunch. There's a patio area. and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I want to sketch something. And sometimes I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm writing some notes in my sketchbook and then I'll feel like I have to transfer it over. There's a lot of notebooks <laughs> in my life right now. <laughs> And I'm trying to just, I'm trying to cut down on it. Like, I just want to carry like one journal, but it's hard to, because each one has its purpose. Right. And uh, right. I don't know if you're in the same boat, like you carry around maybe two or three journals at any given time, or you have that just one, but, um, uh, I feel like I need to carry around a different journal for every different facet of my life, because it's just, there's just too much going on that I can, I, I need to capture everything. It feels like, and my wife gives me crap about it. She's like, you carry that crap around all the time. I'm like, well, you know, anytime, any place, anywhere, something's going to happen and I need to be prepared to write this shit down. I literally just use one journal and it's, uh, it's a dotted, dotted paper journal. So if you look and see the the paper on, it, it's just simple paper with dots all the way across. That's right, the it's almost grid. like a grid, but yep. not a grid. And yep. then inside of here, like, for example, I have, uh, Mostly just long form journaling stuff, but sometimes I'll write little diagrams for myself like that, or oh yeah, there you, you know, go. I'll I'll write down like a little bullet list or something like that, or if it's something really really important and I don't have the journal with me because I don't carry it with me all the time either. I used to for a yep. while, but I stopped. Um, I'll either have a like sticky notes or I'll have a smaller notebook with me. 
And then I can easily just rip those pages and throw them into this journal, especially sticky notes. You can throw them in here. And that also gives you kind of like a tab little system. And it's not a system because it's just all over the place. But if I really need to keep something like a receipt or anything like that, I'll put it in that day for the journal and keep it there. Um, that way I have everything in one place and I don't lose stuff. And it's really kind of like my journal slash wallet slash document folder for all kinds of things. I carry a bunch of stuff in here, um, paper wise, but yeah, I don't, I don't carry it around. I usually just have a little notebook that I keep in my backpack at all times. And then most of the time it's really just, I write down notes on this thing like nonstop. So if I'm taking a call, if I'm taking a meeting, if I'm doing my own thing, if I'm just sitting and I have some thoughts and I want to jot some stuff down, I've written like, I don't know, a couple chapters of a book so far already in my phone. Um, and that's just been from the, you know, the re repetition of using my phone over and over and over right, again that right. started back in 2004, five, six, somewhere in there where they had the phones with the little screen that flipped up and it had like a full QWERTY keyboard on it. I started writing using that and it's just continued on since then. It's a little bit harder to write, but I don't really worry about things like typos and grammatical structure right. and all that stuff. I just put stuff in there and if I need to go back and correct it, I can correct it later. Another really cool place where I keep a lot of ideas is in my chat GPT account. So I'm always mm, constantly yeah. just asking it questions and having it give me lists and ideas and, and organizing things for me. So I'll just give it a bunch of information and just hit enter and it'll list that stuff. And then it'll keep like a running tab of all the stuff that I've actually asked it to produce or the conversations that I've had with it. it sounds strange yeah. talking to an AI, but that's literally what I do. <laughs> I have conversations with the AI sometimes <laughs> when I really want to just get down to the, you know, yeah as much as I can into a topic without doing like four hours of research. I just literally just type in stuff and start having a conversation yeah. with the uh, chat GPT or Bard or whichever one it is, <clears throat> but that's a good way to keep stuff. I think it, I just feel like it's good to keep documentation of things, whether it's for work or for personal stuff or business or whatever. Like it's just this really good habit that kind of pays itself back in dividends and compounds those dividends over time so that if you ever need to go back, like I've gone back and looked at journals from, you know, five years ago and on a certain day to see what was going on, uh, even for mm -hmm. like swings in my mood. Like if I, if I have a day where it's just like really, really down and I need to figure out what's going on, I'll actually go back in a journal a few years back or, you know, a couple journals a few years back and look on that exact day right. and see what was going on. Cause maybe something happened on that day. And just kind of like PTSD trigger stuck in my mind of something that happened yeah. on that day. And when that day comes back around subconsciously, like I just get into this mood. Yeah. I think it's just really super, super important. And I, it's one way to really keep your mind settled through all the, the dust. I, I, I like how you mentioned you have to have a certain space and certain like ambiance to do your writing in. I do as well, but I think coupling journaling and meditation together and doing those kind of couple things, which really were going down this weird rabbit hole, but that's fine. At first it was like, I need a spot that's my own spot. That's quiet. That's whatever. And then I started to force myself to do it out in public. Like I would do it at a restaurant or I would do it at um, like the swimming pool. After I get out of the pool, I would sit down and I would start writing some stuff or meditate or whatever. In public, right. I'd do it in an airport, you know, just laying on the ground, writing in my journal or meditating or whatever. And I force myself to put myself in those situations where there are distractions and force myself to become comfortable with the distractions so that I can then take the thing out and be anywhere, literally, and just journal. And people look at me and they point fingers and they laugh and they make jokes. And I don't care. Like, I don't care. It's not about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, I don't, I have, I'm of the same mindset, right? I don't care what folks really think about it. It's just the fact that I, I really cannot focus if there's like noise around me. I'm, I'm the, uh, the squirrel guy, right? Squirrel, you know, anything moves, I'm looking and I'm like hyper, hyper vigilant about things, you know, don't like to sit with my back to the exit, that type of thing. Right. So I'm always like, on the lookout, I'm always like vigilant about things and it's kind of hard for me to 
write anything down when it's, you know, when I'm in those type of environments. I know you mentioned uh, AI, and I think a lot of folks discount how powerful chat GPT is. Like I've, it's been to the point where I actually asked chat GPT, like, give me a, a kettlebell workout five days a week, you know, uh, no more than 20 minutes, you know, per workout. It gave me a detailed workout. I mean, I still do the workout. It's a, you know, it's an ass kicker. <laughs> I'm like, man, this, I assume it just takes like stuff from all over the internet and just forms it into one thing. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you could ask it anything. I mean, I, I've asked it to, you know, use these stats to, you know, whatever I did in my, my Marine Corps career to form a professional summary that goes at the beginning of my, my resume. And it probably spit out something way better than I could ever, you know, come up with. And, you know, and I've written like fitness reports and summaries and, you know, executive summaries and stuff during my time. And, uh, you know, it came out with something really good. Um, and I still use that to this day on my, you know, I have to tweak it a little bit to, uh, to fit me, but, uh, I still use it on my resume because it's that good. You know, it just takes like really good stuff from around the internet. I suppose a lot of folks that I've talked to, they're like, oh yeah, chat GBT, you know, it's just an AI thing. Well, I mean, it's powerful dude. You know, you use it to your advantage, man. Um, it's, it's taking the best from the internet, you know, or the worst, you know, however you look at it and kind of spin something out for you. Uh, so I, I took a lot from, you know, the Leonardo da Vinci, um, uh, journals, you know, where he has his drawings and he has all his, all his stuff on there, you know, like the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Vitruvian man, things like that. Um, and I was like, you know what, I want to, I want to have something like that. And it started off as a sketch journal, but I have a ton of ideas in there, like for prototypes, for inventions, things that can make different processes better, different, uh, you know, like prototypes that I can 3D print because I'm a big 3D print guy, measurements, like a, just a ton of stuff in, in this one journal. And I have yet to fill it up because it's like a 500 page notebook that I started on and it just, I just have a ton of stuff in there. Ideas. A lot of folks have ideas, you know, why not put that stuff on paper? You know, just don't think about it and not do anything with it. You know, put that stuff on paper. And if you think it's good enough, you know, do your research on Google patents, see if there's anything else out there in the patent world with something that you've been coming up with. If not, hey, either you can do your own patent yourself or contract an attorney and start the patent process for whatever your idea is. Too many people just let their ideas die or somebody else comes up with that idea and they're like, I had that same idea like two years ago. Well, now, now you don't have to be that person. Now you, you can be the one that comes up with that idea. And I, I started that process myself with this little thing that I created and a little uniform item. And they carry it, you know, worldwide at these exchanges. It all started from me simply drawing in that, in that notebook. And, you know, I started drawing and I started taking measurements and I started drawing from different angles, what it could look like. And then I went and 3D printed the prototype. It didn't come out as good. Went back to the drawing board, next page, drew it again, different measurements. That is how I came up with the final product. You know, it took me like 10 pages just to come up with it, but, and, and several, you know, different prototypes, but I attribute all that stuff to what I put down on pen and paper or pencil and paper, because that, if I just thought about, you know, I have to make this thing three millimeters wide and never wrote it down. Well, you know, I would probably never, never remember the next day, you know, that's just me. That's just me. Right. Yeah. I, I keep a notebook with all my prototypes, inventions, ideas, things like that, because you know, who knows what I come up with tomorrow and maybe it's like the million dollar idea or whatever. Yeah. I, I definitely write down, like I said, in my journal, it could be anything. It could be a bullet list. It could be ideas for whatever I'm working on. It could be a, a task list of things I need to get done today. It could be just, you know, three or four paragraphs or one paragraph or two lines of what my, what my thoughts are for the morning or where I'm sitting at or wherever I'm journaling at and how I've processed the day before and things like that. Like it's a whole multitude of all kinds of different things. That's why I said with the, with the phone, I do a lot of note taking on mm -hmm. there as well. And the chat GPT thing, like that's right. It's literally conversations. Like I was, I, I have one pulled up right now and I can show it to you right here. It's like, I was looking for some stats on world war two and 
so I started having this conversation like, you know, what is the, how many people died in combat during World War II? And then it just went on yeah. and on and on and on and on. And I can go back and pull that conversation back up. And so I like having those kind of things around where I can, like you said, if you, if you have something and it's the, the moments that you have, these thoughts are very fleeting, even just within a few minutes. I mean, I write a ton of, um, I read and I write a ton of, quotations and things and it's mainly for myself but if it helps somebody else like that's fine as well too it's great but it's mainly just me writing things down to keep a running tab of things that i want to remember and you know maybe my kids will read it or maybe somebody else will read it and get something out of it yeah. but even from thinking of something that i want to write down that's that seems like an important thought to five or ten minutes later like literally within that five or 10 minute time span, the idea just goes like it just leaves and it's crazy. If I, if I don't write it, it down, like it just disappears. I've, I've noticed that actually doing a ton of this photography stuff over the last year and some change, like the days that I go out without a camera and the days that I'm not taking pictures with the camera or the days that I'm out walking around and I don't have a camera on me. And I'm, of course I got my phone on me, but I feel like, you know, I've got this camera. Why am I not carrying it around with me? But right. those days really suck. Like it's really, it's those days where I'm walking and I'll see something super, super amazing. And I'll be like, damn it, why don't I have my camera? <laughs> like I should just carry it with yeah, me all yeah. the time. It's these fleeting that moments that you just miss if you're not, yeah, if you're not ready to record them and you're not ready to capture those moments, like they just, they go and it's fine. Like it's not a bad thing. There's going to be plenty more moments, but if you can capture those moments and like harness the power of those moments later on down the road, or, you know, even a couple mm -hmm. of years down the road yeah. and really, especially the ideas that you write down. And I've read the biography of Da Vinci. I don't know if you've read it or not, at least Isaacson's biography of Da Vinci and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fascinating dude. Like he wrote everything in notebooks yeah. and it's, it was back in the, what the 1500s or something like that. So like, the paper that they had back then, it wasn't like today where you could just go to like the store and buy notebooks and order notebooks and paper off of Amazon and pens. Like they had very limited amount of supplies. And I think it was really like right, right around the time when books, books were just starting to be published in that same era. Like the printing press was just kind of developing. So yeah. he had on his notebooks, like, the notes would like literally just circle around the margins all the way around until he literally filled up the page and then he would go to the next page. That's how, how resourceful he, like how respectful he was trying to be of the resources that he had because he didn't right. have like notebooks laying around everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's fascinating that he had those things and wrote them down. And even if he didn't implement them, like you can go back today and see the origins of some things like helicopters and, you know, different things of biology because he studied a lot of biology and human anatomy and things like that that we've gleaned from those notebooks uh, and brought into, you know, current science today. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff is fascinating, man. I I love reading stuff like that. <clears throat> I mean, it, I only wish that like the, uh, like, let's say like Native Americans would have wrote more things down, right? Uh, you know, they, everything was via story, you know, spoken word, how fascinating it would have been to know like the history of what they might have seen, you know, what they might have been exposed to, you know, their, their interactions with, you know, different cultures and things like that. It would have been great to, to, uh, to see something like that, to read something like that. Right. I mean, we have, you know, books from, you know, what's that, what's the name of that book I just read? I can't even remember it. The, uh, Gosh, the Comanche moon was it? I I can't even remember. Uh, see, there it goes again. I should have wrote it down somewhere. But um, <laughs> yeah, how uh, you know they they had to like fend off the Spaniards and things like that. You know, just it would have been great to actually like see more of that. You know, but uh, you know, unfortunately, some some of those cultures didn't didn't do things like that at that point in time. But yeah, things like the da Vin you know Da Vinci. You know how he wrote everything down. How that was kind of my inspiration with this whole um, sketchbook turned, you know, idea invention type of type of journal, just to kind of keep it there. It maybe something pops off and maybe I come up with that one great idea that can change the course of humanity you know, or, or, yeah. or, or, you know, it, it probably won't happen, but 
you know, who knows, who knows? Uh, but yeah, man, I, I love stuff like that. And I'm constantly, you know, asking AI stuff, you know, on, on chat GPT, like workouts or, you know, I've never asked it like the civil war or the, you know, how many people died in the revolutionary war, but, um, I have asked it things like, you know, um, fixing stuff on my, my older vehicle. What else have I asked? It? Oh my gosh. The resume stuff, uh, stats, you know, moon phases, things like that. Just random things. I'm like, I wonder what chat GPT has to say. You know, it is just, everything is at our fingertips, man. You know, it's like, we don't have to do all the research like Da Vinci used to have to do, you know, I'm sure he had to like ask people, scholars or, you know, read other things that were before his time. Everything right now is at our fingertips. I, I don't know why a lot of people don't use that. You know, they're, they're quick to Google anything, but you know, why not educate yourself on these stats, right? I, I talk to my kids all the time about that. I'm like, hey man, how, you learn anything today? Oh, no, nah, not really. I'm like, dude, go, go online. You know, there's, you don't even have to go to the library anymore, right? That's, I, I love the library, but you don't even have to go there anymore. Everything is online. You, know, you can get audio books. You can get everything. All your knowledge, all your resources are at your fingertips. You know, you want to learn a new skill? Dude, open up your laptop or log in, you know, open up your phone and start doing the research. That was a big reason why I, when I was on the plane from during New Year's, I went to Florida. I flew back to, to, to California and on the flight back, I was watching, uh, you know, they give the, the little free uh, shows on the screens behind the seats on the headrests. Mm -hmm. And I watched a, um, it was a master class on um, negotiations by Chris Voss. And that, that master class that he gave was so in depth, so good that I immediately, when I got off the flight, I logged into master class and I signed up for a year. I was like, I need to know what this guy knows. You know, and I ordered his book. Like I, I like I del I dove into this, right? I need to know negotiations. And then I started looking at other master classes like how to how to do comedy, how to do this, how to do that, you know, how to do uh wine tasting or you know, how to be a, like a sommelier. I was like, Man, I it was like a whole world opened up for me. I was like, I need to know these things. I don't know why, but I need to know them. <laughs> I'm never going to be a sommelier, but I was like, I need to know what the hell I'm doing when I'm drinking wine, you know? And, uh, it, it, it worked out cause we recently went out to go eat on a Friday night and I was tasting wines and stuff with my wife. And I was like, Oh shit, you know, this is the one from Burgundy, France or whatever. And I, I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I just was copying whatever <laughs> they were saying on the master class, but it sounded good. It sounded good. Yeah. You know, but yeah, expose yourself to all these things, man. There's so much information out there. And I don't know why people don't, don't, don't use it. It's probably the same reason why people generally wouldn't think that journaling is important is because we just have so much information available. That's right. That's always right. on. And so you, right. you don't think you have to record anything or do anything like that's why that's, you know, again, I say it over and over, but the impetus for this whole entire concept of a, of a podcast is really capturing those moments in time yeah. and, you know, encapsulating them in a way that they just because they're fleeting moments and their ideas and thoughts and I, I know you've experienced it probably a, a couple times so far yeah as we've done this like people when you're interviewing somebody and they just have that aha moment and then they go back and the at the end of the interview they're like you've really brought up some things that i haven't thought about for like 25 30 years you know right. and it's it's interesting to to see how people process that stuff. And it's even more interesting to see, like, I'm the same way. My short, my memory is really scattered. It's really all over the place. I don't know if it's like my brain is screwed up or what, but that's why I write the things down. But some of these people that I, that we talk to is, you know, they can go back into very specific details about, you know, a thing that happened in 1987, uh, you know, on the 7th of August at 10, yeah. 27 a.m. It's cra it's insane to me how people can go back and remember and pull that kind of information back up. But yeah, so I couldn't do it for me. I just do it through journaling. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't do it, man. Like I've, I've uh, working in military justice in my time in the, in the Marine Corps, <clears throat> you know, there's been times where you're like, you know, you've seen it on TV too. Like, what were you doing on the, this day, the night of this day? Where were you exactly? You know, I've never been called up as a witness to actually say 
something like that. Like I've, I've been a witness at different levels. Right. But, uh, I've never been called up to like a, let's say like a general court marshal to answer a question like that. But I'm wondering like, what the hell would I even say? Like, uh, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> let me refer back to my journal on that. Day. I don't know. You know, hopefully I wrote something down on that day, but, uh, yeah, I, that bog, again, that boggles my mind. I was like, how do people remember this stuff? And, you know, some people are, are sharper, you know, in the mind where some people exercise their memory a little bit more. And there's folks like, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Jim Quick. He does a lot of stuff with like uh, memory recognition and uh, like a lot of cognition based things. So uh, I've heard, of, heard him on a couple of podcasts. Uh, I know he has a book out and stuff and I've, I've been meaning to read it, but uh, I keep forgetting, you know, so. <laughs> no, man. Case in point. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's a million reasons why, why I keep all of this stuff, man, all these journals and stuff. And that, that's, that's a big reason why, you know, just kind of remembering things and for the future time frame, that's a big reason why I did that whole, um, that thing on the green logbook channel on YouTube is, um, you know, where I documented my entire last year in the Marine Corps, um, partly because I wanted to do it. I started it with the idea that I wanted to do it for myself you know, because I wanted something to remember. Right. And then, um, I told, you know, a friend of mine and that's where it kind of grew. He was like, yeah, you know, that, that'd be great to, you know, for other people, you know, who are getting out. It's like, yeah, you, you know what you're right. So I started sharing that, all that stuff. Right. And a part of it was, you know, uh, something for, for my kids too. Like I, I wanted to share life lessons for my children, you know, like, Hey, here's what I'm learning as I get out, here's what I'm learning in life, you know, top five things that have helped me succeed, you know, cause at one point in time, I'm not going to remember all that stuff, you know, unless I have it written down somewhere. So in, in ways it is like a video journal and I do have another channel that is, is private and, and, uh, they're basically a lot of videos for specifically for my kids, you know, things that I, I share for them, you know, again, life lessons that are just for them. Or things that, you know, oh, on Christmas, you were doing this and I'll upload videos of them. You know, that's a little bit more private, um, at least on YouTube, right? Somewhere to upload the videos. But as far as like the Green Logbook channel, I'm glad I started doing that and documenting the last year. Because the feedback I've gotten was immense. Like, oh, man, this has helped me out. This is great. You know, I've been thinking about where I'm going to live and I don't know. And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm willing to share every part of my journey with you um, if it helps somebody else out. And I'm glad I uploaded this stuff because if you asked me to upload my entire last year of my Marine Corps career today, I'd, I'd be like, I, I don't know where to start. Do I start, you know, last November when I hit 19 years or do I start, you know, I, I just don't know. So I'm glad I kind of kept everything in check with uploading periodically every week or so. Um, and if anything, I mean, I think that's a good, a good way for folks to kind of document. It doesn't need to be public or anything like that. Talk into a camera, talk to yourself on your iPhone, upload it privately to YouTube or something, and then you can look back and remember that. It doesn't have to be written down. It could be a video journal. You know, that's how mine started. You know, I know a lot of people who do stuff like that and they just keep it private. That's how, uh, what's the name? Um, Eric Thomas, that, uh, that guy, motivational speaker. That's how he started. He just started uploading videos of his, um, his talks to like high school kids and it just blossomed into, you know, where he is now. And he didn't mean for it to be like something like that. It was just him talking to these students about motivation, about, hey, you can do it. You just have to get out of your shell and do it, right? And it blossomed into something greater than he ever thought it, that, could, that it could be. I think a lot of folks would benefit from doing something like that. And definitely, it's a, a great idea. And it's a great kind of bookend on our conversation. I think we should go ahead and wrap. I mean, we've been here for, wow been here for an hour already um but yeah just documenting things in general whether it's a journal doing it on a you can send yourself video messages now and you can take audio recordings now and the beauty of everything now is you can get it all transcribed if you ever want to put it on paper oh, absolutely. or put it into some kind of document um it's just a really good way to keep tabs not only on yourself but on what you've been going through progression uh, if you're dealing with a diet or you're dealing with some kind of 
physical or mental problem that you got to deal with and docu even documenting that stuff and going over it and seeing where you've progressed over time because you don't always see that progression uh it's it looks very fluid in in real time but when you actually go back and look like six months before a year before two years before to where you are now like you'll see these massive leaps in progression of your life in general so Absolutely. many many good reasons many good reasons to just document the things you're doing whether it's doing a podcast interview or whether it's doing it for yourself privately and you know storing it on cassette tapes you know I don't want to date myself too much, but you can do that as well. Um, so there's different ways to do it. But yeah, it's definitely something useful, at least something useful that I found and that you found. And I think it's really helpful to get you to be able to focus and kind of get your mind in the right place to then be able to think about other things or put things in perspective or put things in a chronological kind of order or prioritize things so that you can mm -hmm. make sure you're making decisions for the right reasons at the right times and that you've actually sat down and thought about these things thoroughly yeah and you have some kind of documentation to go off of if you have any questions of yourself to go back and critique it or or adjust things along the way absolutely yeah it can only yep. benefit you i agree cool well i think uh yeah we can wrap this one and let everybody get back their day. We don't want to waste the internet. Uh, we're online. We're on the internet everywhere. We're on Reads Across America radio on Wednesday evenings. And you can find us pretty much everywhere. We're out there. So you can find Victor on the Green Logbook as well, on his YouTube channel as well. So, all right. Till next time.